I was Catholic many, many years ago. My parents raised me Catholic, but I decided at a very uh, young age that Catholicism wasn't necessarily the path for me. Growing up, I was pretty feminine, and people would always latch on to that. And I would hear, I look at the bakla over there. And I was like, y'all, we just came from mass. Why do we need to jump into the chismis right now? My name is Kalyan, and I am a queer Filipino, and I'm also a Tibetan Buddhist. I grew up in the Bay Area um, in a predominantly Filipino community, and I was very involved within um, our church. I always considered it like a safe and sacred space, but there would be times when I would be made fun of for being perceived as gay. I wasn't out at the time. In fact, like I was trying to convince myself and trying to pray the gay away, if you will. It hurt, felt that this was a space where I was supposed to feel community, but I didn't. There was hostility. At a young age, I thought about self-harm. I thought maybe it will be easier for my family if I didn't exist, because the church and our culture was telling me otherwise, that, you know, um, I'm basically going to hell. I just had to leave and I just wanted to pursue my own connection to my spirituality because I wouldn't find it in church. I found that in Buddhism, Buddhism was a very pragmatic religion. It was one that focused on values that I cared about, about compassion, about understanding. Um, about really in, um, thinking about and questioning life and life's bigger questions. I am here I'm speaking with Father Julian from St. Francis of Assisi Church here in New York City. I think our communities and all communities can benefit from open and honest dialogue with one another. I'm not trying to say that he will change my mind or I'll change his mind, but I think it's better that we understand each other's perspectives. Father Julian, when I was 14, I left the Catholic Church and refused uh, confirmation. I felt pushed aside and ignored and really made to feel invisible, like I didn't matter. How I wish you could have been an adult uh, who could have intervened in the situation. That somebody or some adult could have said that it's okay to be gay and be Catholic, you know. How would you react if someone says, Father, I hate the sin, not the sinner, and that's why I'm homophobic? Um, there's no point in isolating, uh, ostracizing, and making our uh, brothers and sisters invisible or unimportant or devalued. Those things are against our Christian and human values. My question is, why do we keep on hurting each other? Maybe we should think and say, yeah, how can we truly live out our faith in Jesus Christ, who asks us to be loving, forgiving, and accepting of one another? Father Julian, let's say you're speaking to my 12-year-old self. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing titos and titas like repeating this homophobic vitriol. How do I tell them this is not okay? That's wonderful. How I wish we can teach our young people to be able to stand up to themselves and challenge those titas and titas and say to them, well, uh, it's not all right to call me bakla. And where's the place of your faith or religion here? So I get your approval to um, call out homophobia with elders, right? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, yeah. What happened to thou shalt not judge your neighbor? Love and respect is, you know, very big in our culture. We should continue to promote that, you know, regardless of what the sexual orientation of our children is, their choices in life. 
when we had community members talking about propositions in California that were anti-gay marriage, it made me feel really unsafe. I didn't feel like I was able to um, to speak to some, you know, to anyone um, within the church. It's very heartening for me to hear that you do have a deep connection with your parishioners and that you are accessible. There should be no judgment in our church. There should be dialogue. There should be solidarity. You know, um, there should be no suffering in there. That there should be acceptance and celebration of their lives. I do have hope that there will be a young Filipino-American Catholic who will hear your um, teachings, who will know that they have an ally within the church, um, within their um, community. Every uh, clergy or priest and religious should not just be an ally, but you know, somebody uh, who's open to a dialogue or welcome uh, of individuals like you and in, in the LGBTQ community. It's very healing, actually. I remember when I first um, learned about you and your work, I was like, yes, and he's Filipino. <laughs> I wish more of our community had someone like you in their lives. I wish more LGBTQ youth uh, who are struggling had someone like you in their life. Well, I'm not representing any, any particular quarter in the Catholic Church. I'm just speaking as a, a Franciscan friar. Uh, I'm not claiming any uh, expertise on any field related to our conversation. They might listen to me, they might not listen to me. You know, they might say that I said the right thing, or they might condemn me. You know, that's how it is. A part of me wishes that I could come back into the church, but I know that my path is following the path of Buddhism. If I can carry you back today, back to the Catholic Church, I would do that. But that will be disrespectful of your faith journey. Who am I to say that your leaving the church and entering Buddhism is not finding God there? We believe that God is in the Catholic Church, and we also believe that God is in other faiths. You know, um, I would say you're fine, you're great, God gave you the freedom to choose. Thank you. After this conversation, my appreciation for Father Julian has deepened, but also my cynicism has eroded quite a bit. In this time that we're living in right now, it's so easy to be hopeless. It's so easy to give up. But when you see a community constantly fighting and uplifting, their struggle, you can't help but be inspired. We need to love one another more fiercely and deeply than this world hates us.